Okay, what we're going to take a look at today is uh, um, Chapter 8, Section 7, which is slope-intercept form. Um, fairly tricky concept, uh, especially for 7th graders to, uh, to understand. So, um, first of all, this right here is written in slope-intercept form. And we've covered this in the textbook, and, and there's uh, uh, quite a bit on it in the book under Chapter 8, Section 7. Um, this is the form you wanted it, where it's a y equals, you have generally something x, and then plus or minus something. Okay, now when you have it in this form, to pick out your slope and y intercept isn't too bad. Okay, this number here that's with your x is the slope. Okay, so on this problem here, your slope is equal to 12, and your y intercept okay, is going to be equal to negative 4. Now the reason it's negative 4 is because it's minus 4 here. One thing that you probably should get in the habit of doing is adding the opposite here and uh, um, you know, then you'll get it as negative 4 instead of, um, you know, instead of maybe putting 4 there and, and getting it wrong. Now, you might wonder, well, why, why are you finding the slope and the y-intercept? Well, generally what happens is, is you graph these then on a, on a coordinate grid. And once you, uh, you have the slope and y-intercept, you can use these two to, to graph it on a coordinate grid. Um, the y-intercept, remember, is the point that crosses y, which is the vertical uh, line on the, uh, on the coordinate grid. Um, so that would be a negative 4, and then a slope of 12 is, is pretty steep. Um, and I'm going to show you how you would graph them on a coordinate grid here in a little bit. Okay, let's take a look at one that's a little bit more difficult. This one is not in the y equal form yet, so we need to use our algebra skills to get it in that form. So what we do is we divide our equation into two sides, okay? We want to get y all by itself. So it says y equals, and then, then we'll have it in the form we needed it. So what we need to do here is, first of all, add the opposite, where you have some subtraction, because otherwise you're going to end up making mistakes. So I'm going to add the opposite. This, remember now, is like negative 1y. But let's just leave it the way it is for now. Okay, so what we're going to end up doing here is we want to get rid of this 3x, get it over on the other side, and get it out of this side. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. Okay, so these cancel. So what I have here is negative y equals 6 minus 3x. Okay, now I can add the opposite here by making this an addition problem because right now if we switch them around the way it is, we, the, the order that we subtract it matters. Okay, for example, if you take 3 away from 6, that's 3. But if you take 6 away from 3, okay, that's negative 3. So the order matters in subtraction. But in addition, it doesn't. So let's add the opposite, okay, which is a fair move to, to do. Okay, so I added the opposite there. Now the order doesn't matter when we add. So we can now switch these around successfully. So this becomes negative 3x plus 6. Okay, over here, we still have negative y. Now this negative y is a problem. Okay, we need to, this is like negative 1y. We need to get rid of the negative 1. So to get rid of the negative 1, we divide by negative 1. So we got to go over here. This whole works has to be divided by negative 1. So here's what we end up with, and that's what makes this problem so tricky. This cancels, so I got y equals. Now, negative 3x divided by negative 1 is positive 3x, okay? And a positive 6 divided by a negative 1 is um, a negative um, 6, Okay, so really if we add the opposite here, this becomes plus negative 6 now. Okay, so now we have it in our y-intercept form that we needed it. Okay, and if we pick out what we need, okay, here's the slope. Okay, so that right there would be the slope if I write that down. Slope, okay, is 3, and our y-intercept is negative 6. Okay, certainly a challenging problem. Um, 
but you know we've we've broken problems down like this back in the section where we where we worked with two-step equations and so on you know earlier in the school year so following this process you know you can get to it but uh, um, certainly a tough one okay now here is how we graph them on a coordinate grid we got a slope of negative 2 a y-intercept of 2 all right so what we do is we first of all we go to the y-intercept the y-intercept is 2 that's right here the point that it crosses the y-intercept or y is this way so it crosses it right here at 2 that's what this is telling us okay if it was negative 2 we put it down here all right now we have a slope of negative 2 okay what I tell students to do is to write this as a fraction, negative 2 over 1. Okay, and now you can go ahead and, and I graph the second point here. What this means is this is the change in y, and this is the change in x. So what we need to do is we need to, to th this is how we're changing y. We're going down 2 because it's a negative 2. So from here, we go down to 1, 2. And this is a positive one, so we go over to the right one. Okay, that would be the next point on uh, um, our coordinate grid. Okay, so now we can take a straight edge and we can connect these. Okay, and we would we would have our line. Okay, that would be graphing. Um, when I have a slope of negative two and a y-intercept of two. That's how we go about graphing it. Okay. All right, hopefully this is helpful. Once again, this is for section, uh, or chapter 8, section 7. Uh, so if you're stuck on that part, this is uh, hopefully helpful. Thank you.